So today I would like to uh, continue with the class about the uh, narrow escape problem. Um, let me explain what uh, the uh, narrow escape is about. So we are interested in the following question. How long it takes for uh, a Brownian particle to move inside the domain here? where it can be reflected on the boundary before it reaches here a small absorbing window located at this uh, position this is uh, labeled in green that you can see so this is in dimension 2 and so you have the equivalent problem in dimension 3 so this is a fundamental a problem in biology in chemistry to calculate um, how long it takes for this to happen because one of this is the rate for, um, as we're going to see, for chemical reaction for a molecule to bind or to find another molecule. So today um, I want to focus in this uh, first uh, part in the dimension 2 case and I want to show to you how to derive this formula which said that the mean first passage time tau depends on the area here of the domain, the diffusion coefficient d, this is the diffusion coefficient, and epsilon, which is uh, here, so we have log of 1 over epsilon, this is the ratio of the absorbing, so this is the ratio of the total absorbing to, so this is the, ra the ratio of the absorbing boundary of the lengths that you can see here in, in green to the total boundary, to the total length of the boundary. And this, uh, we will do this approximation, do this calculation when epsilon is uh, uh, much smaller than 1. And we will see that there is here, so this is true for epsilon small, so that this term, the first term here is dominant, that is the term this term here that I'm highlighting in red, this is dominant. This is dominant compared to uh, the second term here, which is of order one. And so if you are interested, I have uh, written here a certain number of uh, reference references to see how this problem has been um, has been solved using Green's function, so this is using the first reference in 2004 in Journal of Statistical Physics. In dimension 3 you have this uh, zinger olkman uh where in this uh, physical review E you have dimension 3 and the next order term. Some of the applications are summarized in this PNAS paper of 2007. And, uh, um, there is more of um, the narrow escape time in these two papers in uh, multi in Siam, uh, Siam multi scale, Siam multi scale uh, modeling and simulations, 2012. Um, now let's go to uh, matching asymptotic methods, which has been uh, uh, really developed by the group of Michael Vard and uh, earlier by, by Joe Kellers and co-workers. So this is really these uh, references that uh, should be looked at in Siam Journal of Applied Math. <laughs> There's a new, um, new uh, articles from the group of Vards uh, from 2012-2013, which, um, which are also very interesting. And um, finally, if you are interested in reviews for applications in, um, in physics, biophysics, neuroscience, there is a uh, um, good review that just uh, appeared this year from uh, uh, the group of Paul Breslov. There are, uh, and we have uh, now a couple of reviews that just appeared in uh, um, Progress Physics Report and uh, next year in uh, Siam Journal, uh, Siam Review, and the Journal of Physics A. So before continuing, I would like to mention 
uh, something that we will see in the second uh, second class, which is about um, what happened when the particle, the Brownian particle, which is inside here, can escape either at one hole, this is hole A, or at a second hole, which is the, the labeled here by B. It's dimension 3, and you have the same in dimension 2. So we will see that um, this is the formula, the asymptotical formula. Um, I'm not going to discuss precisely what they mean, but no, it's the, the, the main difference is that the length, the distance between the two holes, let's say delta is the distance between the two holes, enter into um, the game. And the uh, IDs, I mean, we have there is only one fundamental ideas. If the holes, the two holes are very close to uh, each other, this is really equivalent to having one hole of, uh, of, uh, of a basically the size doesn't matter much. So this is really equivalent. And the time, let's say when you have two holes, is basically equal to the time, th the, the asymptotic terms, that when you have one hole. However, if the holes are well separated, the time is basically, so when you have two holes, it's basically the time for one hole here divided by two. So there is a, a, a nonlinearity between going from, from this to uh, from this situation where you have two neighboring holes to that. And this uh, 50 percent um, difference um, can be uh, used in, in, in biology, for example, for uh, regulation of fluxes. So you can imagine that by clustering holes, if you have a bacteria, that the bacteria is inside the gradient, so you have here a pipette that creates a gradient of uh, molecules, of signaling molecules, by reclustering receptors here that are located by you know having a, a structure where all the receptor here can be uh, can change positions you can modulate the flux so we will discuss this two hole effect in the second class now i want to continue with um, another description is what happened when a brownian particle move inside the domain and has to find a hole which is hidden here in a cusp this is called the cusp. So we have seen the dimension 2 case, the dimension 3 case, but if you are in dimension 2, and this we'll see in class in, the, um, in part 3 of the class, we will see that now instead of having the leading order term which is log of 1 over epsilon, the leading order term here is 1 over square root epsilon, which means at the time is suddenly much longer. And the reason is, is that you have to find a target which is hidden here in the cusp. And so finally, we will continue in this uh, third class about what happened. So this was the dimension 2 with the cusp. What happened when you have a cusp in dimension 3? And we will see that instead, again, of having in dimension 3 a time which is uh, proportional to um, 1 over a. It's now proportional to 1 over a to the power 3 halves. All right, so how are we going to um, derive these uh, formulas? So we have seen in previous classes that uh, the mean first passage time for a stochastic uh, equation which is here is going to be just the Brownian motion so x dot equals square root of 2 dw dot then the Dinkin equation could be written as d Laplacian u equals minus 1 on the domain omega so you have here the domain so on the absorbing window here we have uh, u equals 0 and on the rest of the window and the reflecting part, we have reflecting boundary condition. And so we would like to now approximate or find uh, 
the behavior of u epsilon of x as epsilon goes to zero. So how it behaves. So intuitively, as epsilon goes to zero, the time u epsilon of x should go to infinity. So this is epsilon goes to zero. And if you th we, th we think about, uh, to get intuition about what the solution looks like, if we start at position x here, or if you start at position x prime, basically the, lin the leading order term should not see the position. Unless you start in a very small uh, part in the, the boundary, which is called the boundary layer. So if you start in the boundary layer, you may see the initial position. But in principle, it should not depend. So you, at, at least the leading order term, should not depend on x. So this should be of as long as we are not x and x prime are not in the boundary layer. Suggesting that uh, at the leading order, u epsilon is independent of x. So is independent of the position. All right. So for um, expressing u, we will need what we have seen in previous classes, the, um, the Green's function. So let me remind you that uh, um, the Green's function is solution of minus Laplacian g equals uh, delta Dirac. Uh, this positive function, and if you are in Rn, you need to impose at infinity that it goes to zero. It, this is because g is, uh, is otherwise, since it is um, a function that uh, the, if you add the constants to this, it's, uh, it's also a solution. g plus a constant is a solution, so this will fix the constants to zero. All right, so it's uh, uh, well known that the Green's function depends on the point P where you have the delta Dirac, so this is point P where you have here in the plan, this is Rn, so you have a delta Dirac at point P where the solution has to go to uh, infinity. And it is well known that uh, in Rn it is uh, uh, given by uh, this where omega n minus 1, this is the uh, volume of the uh, sphere s n minus 1. So you have a singularity which is algebraic and it is uh, uh, n minus 2. So in dimension 3, you have 1 over 4 pi divided by uh, the distance between p and q. So this is point q. And what is important is the distance between p and q. And in dimension 2, it's just log. So now, instead of having the, instead of having, uh, the Green's function in Rn, if you have have the plane, so you are in Rn plus, then, and if we impose this Neumann boundary condition on this, what is important to notice is that uh, for a point P that is exactly on the, um, on the boundary, you have a factor 2 in the Green's function. And this is important because this is due to the image charge uh, which is well known in uh, electrostatic. And we have seen that uh, before in the theory of Green's function f in, in the previous class. All right, so now let's start with the Green's function. And now we have to solve, we have to use this to solve the equation. So I will, for now, as I'll assume that the diffusion coefficient is equal to 1. And now what we need to solve it is Laplacian u equals minus 1. So what we are going to do is to multiply this equation by u and this equation by j and we are going to uh, use the uh, following uh, Green's identity. So this is called now Green's identity which says that if we have integral of j Laplacian u minus uh, u Laplacian j and we've integrated the, the domain omega this is equal to what happened on the surface j d u d n minus u d j d n. Now we have to integrate this over the surface d s. 
So now we just need to replace uh, every quantity by its value. Yeah, so we've multiplied this. All right, so Laplacian U, by definition, it's equals to minus 1. So this first term here, we'll just give integral of j. So let's write everything p and q, average over the domain omega. There's a minus 1, and this is going to be, let's say, dv um, q. Minus, so Laplacian j, this is minus delta, so this is plus u at point p and has this has to be equal to d omega so du dn this is zero except on the absorbing hole which we call d omega a so this is g a p q and now we have to use this is du dn of q d s q minus, and now djdn by definition, this is one of the, the um, surface of the boundary, and we have to integrate u of q dsq. Right, so this is now the equation, the integral equation that uh, we just derived. So this is an integral equation which express the value of u. So the function, the Green's function, this is known. So this quantity is known. This is unknown. This is the average of u. This is the mean. And um, there's this here a term, which is a new term, which is the flux, which we'll have to compute. Flux, this is called the probability flux probability flux that will be computed, that we need to estimate. And there is something that we haven't used, there's two things that we haven't used yet, and we're going to use now, is that um, what happens when P is on the, uh, the absorbing boundary, from which we know by definition that U of P is zero because this is exactly the absorbing boundary. So we are going to use this now to try to give an estimate for uh, du dn and try to approximate uh, the uh, value of the of the solution. So one last thing to finish: when epsilon goes to zero, what happened? So the first term here doesn't depend on epsilon. U of p, as we have seen, should go to infinity. So this should tend to infinity. This is the average here that should also uh, be balanced and tends to infinity. And this also. So basically, we have now three terms that are going to be important. This is 1, 2, and 3. And uh, the first one as it is independent of epsilon, will not uh, contribute to the at to leading order. All right. So we have seen that um, now what we need is to calculate uh, this uh, quantity, and uh, uh, I will continue now for uh, in the next class.